I remember the day. My father, who was uh, asked to help at the Uganda Nations at the Honiton camp in Devon, because he was um, used to working with the Asians and Indians during the period he was in India in five years, and he could speak fairly good Hindi as well. So they obviously thought he was going to be actually quite helpful to get to people to be able to establish themselves and become relaxed in, in, into this new being of Honiton in Devon or being in the UK. And uh, he'd already started there. Um, I was 19 then, so it was quite a few years ago, as you can imagine, uh, working as an electrical engineer or training as an electrical engineer. And we were over tea and my dad said, Rob, would you mind giving me a hand? I said, as a 19 year old, how can I help you, dad? He said, well, as you know, I've just started working at the uh, Honiton camp, um, helping the rehabilitation of the Uganda nations, which we'd, which we'd had watched on the TV and we've all, all everybody had been watching on the TV. And I said, well, how can I help? He said, well, there's a lot of 19 year old boys and girls at the camp um, that all of a sudden have had to uproot from Kampala, Uganda. And now they're sat, sat in Devon in Honiton and the weather's not very nice. Um, just want you to be there. Could you talk to people just be the, and just be a friend or just try and help them about to learn about England and the Honiton, etc. And what's expected, colleges and um, education, how things could be different, just make them feel at home. Um, so I said, yeah, of course, that'd be, be fine. Went there after work one evening and dad introduced me to uh, well, three lads, one called Jay Chandy. Uh, I used to know him as Jay Prakash. Um, a lad called Ismail and another lad called Pinto. And they just introduced me to him and they said, Rob, Jay, this is, um, get on you guys and have a chat, you know, so over a coffee and we'd be able to eat there with them and we'd chat about the customs in England and they told me their stories of, of what they've had to put up with and what they've had to come across over into, into the UK. And um, we became firm friends and um, we still are firm friends. And my father's name was, it was Ronald Waldron. He used to work for in the police station in Honiton and uh, he was contacted by obviously government or whoever was actually part of the, the resettlement asking him because they knew his background of being in India. He was quite uh, quite a distinguished gentleman. Never forget his, his short cut moustache and very upright and uh, like that things done absolutely spot on. And Zaya and um, during the war unfortunately he had he was he had a serious accident. It was blown up I should say. Um, and uh, he was uh, rehabilitated back to the UK because of his injuries. And father used to tell me stories, a lot of stories about his time in India, and I was one of my still on my tick list to to uh, to go and visit and and go back to where he was. When I first went to the camp, because obviously the camp used to be a military camp, um, so you, I had been in it before when it was used as a full uh, uh, military camp for for different soldiers or whatever. Um, and then went there and there was all these Indian nations there and they looked lost, a lot did look lost, for, which is quite understandable, isn't it? Obviously they'd just been pulled, wrenched out of their country, banged into a country that, which they didn't know. Um, some struggled to understand the language. So you feel that you, you had to try and welcome them and make them feel wanted. And which is a lot of the volunteers, um, Bunty Charles, who was part of the ladies, women's voluntary service, fantastic lady, known her for years. She actually obviously was big help to introducing it and making feel welcome. My father, again, because of his uh, ability to understand the language and his past experiences. So it makes you feel they were feeling welcome and they knew that they were going to be looked after. And, and I was the same. I just wanted to make them feel safe, really, after what the traumatic times they'd gone through, um, which was really, well, it was a, you couldn't think of something how scary it could be. And uh, Jay, Jay Prakash, a friend of mine, is telling me what he had before he left. And all of a sudden, I think it was 50 shillings or something like this, you were allowed to take with you in a suitcase, if you were lucky. I think you just think, how could you experience that yourself? You put, it, put yourself in that picture, having to walk out of your house, which was your family home, which you'd, and then all of a sudden put on an aeroplane with nothing, and this is now going to be your new existence. Well, it, it must be so traumatic and stressful for people. When the Uganda nations came to Honiton, obviously all of a sudden they have got a different culture they're moving into. So, which you had total, they had respect for that. We had respect for their culture. So it's again an integration of them to understand how we were and how we tick, so to speak, 
with us also asking them questions about their culture. So it's a learning curve both ways. My mum was a maternity nurse at Honiton Hospital and she actually helped with the delivery of one of the, the first Ugandan babies that was in, in, uh, born in Honiton. Um, which was a fantastic experience. So I think there was, there was actually there was a clip in, a, in our local paper. This is the first new um, baby born in England, which was rather sweet. You know? It just seems to be a natural, normal thing to do. Is to, you know, some people come into a country um, having a clue what's ex expected to be there to help them out when you can. You know, no matter what country they come from, I think it's, it's part of the human race. It's what you should be doing. You know, you help one another. Jay and I, we talk for hours about his life. In, in Kampala and how the changes were going to be for him. It's so difficult, I suppose, it, to try and re-establish yourself, as I said earlier, trying to re-establish yourself into a new country and come into, into, the, into that way of thinking. Jay was lucky, he could speak very, very good English and most of the people that I met could speak very good English, but there was, uh, there was a percentage there that couldn't. So obviously they've got first, first their first task in life to be able to understand the British language. So again, we were, people were helping them there to learn the language. As education people were actually walked quickly on the case. Jay came to our house and he had um, an English roast. First time ever he'd had an English roast. And he, sort of, he always, he mentions it now, these green Brussels sprouts. And he just, what are these things? You know, he said, well, that's just, he said, they're like mini cabbages. You know, what are they? Do you, what do you do with them? You know, so, um, but English food is, I think everybody soon gets to enjoy and like we also enjoyed the Indian food because I was there a lot of evenings a lot of weekends and joined Jay because Jay was working in the kitchens at the time so we were, used to enjoy the Indian food and, and eating it so we, we knew their customs and we loved their food <laughs> I've always been partial to Indian food I think I prefer it than English but uh, don't tell my wife that one so Jay and I became firm friends and uh, he started off doing an engineering course and in Tiverton uh, learning me mechanics and how to, to uh, rebuild engines which he was very enthusiastic about and used to drive the cars as well and ride motorbikes soon loved being a petrol head a bit like myself um, and we grew from firm friends he he then moved from there and worked in come back to Honiton to work which we met again and we worked in a club together and in evenings of weekends. Uh, Jay then went to work at a, a hotel local to us. Um, and it was, he became part of Honiton really for a while. And then he obviously moved away with his own new career. But he was a welcome face within Honiton and people knew him. He went to, um, was it Weymouth, I think, and uh, started his first hotel there. And then uh, we kept in contact briefly there because obviously Jay was very busy man building up his his, his, his uh, hotel business up, and I'm not sure the exact date, but um, he he was uh, contacted me and said that he was he was marrying uh, an Indian lady Bobby, and would would like to come to his wedding, which was thrilled with absolutely, and which was in uh, Heathrow I think it was, anyway fantastic two days there. Yeah, then uh, he came down to our house. My daughter then was uh, 18. So he and Jay being the godfather to, to, to my daughter, um, he thought it'd be a bit of a lovely surprise. So they came with his daughter and wife to home. Uh, my daughter was in at college and to be a big, big surprise for her when she arrived that see Jay, uh, my goodness, you know, I haven't seen him for a while. You know, all of a sudden he's here to uh, celebrate with a bottle of champagne her 18th birthday. Which was it was a bit of a gap then because we had, all, as you know, life's changed and we get involved in our own families. So we did contact for a while, um, which was a bit of a shame, but we all were doing our own things, so which is totally understandable. And then um, it was on Facebook, I think, was initially the first I saw that uh, the celebration of, of uh, the Uganda nations coming to this country in 50 years that, you know, um, and I thought this is the time where I need to, we need to make contact again. So and it was a, that was a gap of like 26 years, I think, where we hadn't actually seen each other physically. Um, and it was amazing. Within, I'd, I'd put in on, a, I think, a Ugandan website or website, um, does anybody know Jay Prakash? I said, he's got a wife called Bobby, had a daughter of about seven. She's probably now in her 20s, 
and he was at Honiston camp. Um, please, if you know him or his no details, let me know or give me a call. And within no time, a matter of weeks, a fantastic network that <laughs> there is. Um, I got a call, so yes, here's Jay's number. Um, fantastic. So we um, immediately rung him up and, uh, hi Jay, it's Rob. My goodness, you know. And we probably chatted for about an hour. Well, we'd been sp obviously speaking to each other on the phone for uh, quite a few times and for hours talking, you know, just reminiscing. This is what everybody does. Telling us about how our children have grown and done, what they've done in their lives. And it was all so much information there that we obviously had missed for a while. And then it was great. Jay telling me about his family, all married, mind. I've still got a daughter at home, not found her husband yet. Oh, hopefully will soon. Um, so it was fantastic just telling what we both have done with ourselves and how well we've done with our lives. And now we're say to our retirement and we can uh, sit back and enjoy. So we've been together now for 50 years off and on, I suppose, as our lives evolve, we do things. But we've, and just recently we've kept in contact again um, but due to the, this uh, celebration of the 50 year anniversary. And we felt as we're both now retired and uh, I, put out that I needed to find Jay again. So we're just, to, just to, so it's probably been 25 years since we actually uh, saw each other. And my children were obviously quite small. Jay's children were very small then. In fact, Jay was, who was my wedding. Uh, he was at my best man for my first, uh, my, uh, my wedding. He was also godfather to my eldest daughter. So that's how firm and friends, friendship we became. And, um, and we're still in touch. They're all done well. I know it's which is fantastic absolutely fantastic it shows you what people can do and they put their mind to it you know and, and they have a little bit of help as we were well if you work and... out look three months we were in Honiton everybody was put in house in jobs yeah yeah somewhere along the yeah, lines absolutely. colleges um, yeah. schools it can be done everything was arranged it's, it's very so very quickly the government back then were able to do it and I can't and understand it was, wasn't the only it. camp no, no those camps that were all around the and UK. They, they, they did it very well, yeah. very quickly. Back then, you had the people there offering their voluntary services to help those people yeah, yeah. to re-establish themselves in the UK. People like your age, easier, because, easier, say, yeah, because you, you, you're learning all the time, aren't you? Like a, a lot of, lot lot of our age had to start from the beginning. Yeah. Some of the families broken up. Some well, you people imagine, were in, in different countries. Yeah. It's, don't, don't think it's all in UK. Some yeah. states, some family yeah. didn't have the passports, the only kids here, all yeah. parents. All that had to be put you, together. You through. imagine you think yourself now, if you were in Kampala now it's at our age, mm. and I said, and all what you've got, and then all of a sudden you left to leave everything, and you're six, 70 years old now, like this out, and you're like, bang, here are, you're in England. I think we were fortunate. Not only that, we, we made a lot of friends. Uh, in Honiton, Prao was probably only <laughs> Coloured chap, uh, and everybody <laughs> seemed to know you, and everybody yeah. welcomed you. Whatever you yeah. went in a pub, they were offering you a drink. Um, I can't understand personally how well we 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 achieved a necessity and brought um, the Uganda nations from Kampala into the UK, and I think it went very well. It was a struggle. It was a difficult times for more, and we should have utilised and used those memories and how well we did it. And I can't understand why we can't still do it. Um, with the refugees of Ukraine and Afghanistan, we've done it once. We've seen, shown we've done it. We've shown the world that we can do it. I was, we should welcome all, personally. We're all here. We're all human homo sapiens. We're, we're here on this planet, you know. Why can't we just be together?